MMOs are the most commonly searched for game type and mobile gaming is the biggest gaming platform in the world. 2023 has some really exciting games coming out, some of which few people know about. So in this video, I'm going to tell you the top 10 mobile MMOs of 2023. The first and best MMO for 2023 is Project Stars, also known as Outer Land. This game is the ultimate space survival game with the perfect sandbox feel. In fact, it has gotten so much attention that Tencent ended up buying it and they are now in charge of the project. Now this game still has a lot of work. When I played it in its second closed beta, I said it might be the buggiest game I have ever played. But honestly, between how amazing the concept is and Tencent's vast amount of resources to work on it mixed with their proclivity for excellence I had to put it on the top of this list in typical survival game fashion when your spaceship lands you are required to gather resources to build up your base and while some of these resources are similar to an earth survival game the game truly captures the feel of being on a different planet and part of that is the MMO aspects of the game and then once you and your teammates build a rocket you can travel to nearby planets to get rarer and more unique resources. Right now, the game's solar system has five different types of planets, including stuff like an underwater planet, and the devs seem to be building into the game a great blend of PvE and PvP. Almost every animal in the game can be tamed as a mount, and they are building a fairly complex skill system into the game's crafting options. Also, the game's crafting system has taken such an extreme sandbox approach that if you make something poorly, it simply won't work. You can see here that the first vehicle I made in the game was completely unusable because I built it where the wheels were touching each other so I had to disassemble the car and try again. I love it when games do stuff like this because it shows the devs know that their main focus should be to provide the tools for us to play rather than telling us how to play their game. So this game has the raw components of being the number one MMO on the phone and while I stand by my claim that it still has a long way to go, I think that Tencent could pull this off before the end of 2023. The second game on the list is Odin Valhalla Rising. I know I said that this would be the number one game last year and it never came out, but I don't know what to tell you. It has been out in Asia for almost a year now and it is still doing really well, but they don't seem to be in a rush to release it to the rest of the world. I guess the Asian mobile market just has that much more money than we do, or at least their mobile gaming scene is just that much more advanced than ours. I am happy to announce that because of gamers push back the game did get rid of autoplay. This is a great win for gamers, but not one of the three main reasons I am promoting this game. The first reason I'm promoting this game is because the graphics in Odin Valhalla Rising are unprecedented for mobile gaming. The landscapes are breathtaking, the characters are authentic, and the skills are dynamic with fantastic choreography. The second reason is because of the game's commitment to its open world and your ability to travel through that world however you want. Being able to experience a world with my friends the way that we want want to experience that world is a huge value to me and many other MMO players because without it, the game will struggle to feel immersive. And then the last reason I have kept this game towards the top of the list is because after the game was released in only South Korea, it took over South Korea and has made hundreds of millions of dollars in just one country. As I said last year, gamers don't spend that kind of money unless they like the game. And statistically, games that are friendlier to free to play players players make more money. Another benefit of Kakao Games making so much money is that they are now already producing three more AAA games, many of which will be making it into some of my other videos. The bonus game for this video is Gold Tower Defense M. The name might not seem like a lot, but do not be fooled. This is a fantastic tower defense game. In addition to the usual things we like about tower defense games, like a variety of new maps and enemies with a large assortment of customization for our towers and defenses, Gold Tower Defense has also implemented a rock, paper, scissors system to where if you pair the right tower against the right enemy, you will get a 40% increase in effectiveness, whereas if you pair the wrong tower, you will get a 40% decrease. This makes strategizing ever more complicated, which is one of the things that I love about tower defense games. In addition to all that, Gold Tower Defense has one of the best PvP arenas I have seen in a tower defense game where you are thrown into a 
a very fast paced and impossible tower defense challenge in parallel to a real time opponent. This is pretty exhilarating and the match goes by pretty quickly, giving it the feel of a multiplayer match in another game except it's tower defense, which is very impressive. If that sounds impressive to you as well, I have put links in the description and pinned comment of this video on where to download this game for free. The third game on the list is Ashfall, which is NetEase's new post-apocalyptic MMO shooter. In typical Netty's fashion, instead of just making a Fallout mobile, thus incurring the wrath of Fallout fans, they are essentially making their own semi-unique mobile version of the game. I think they might even have bought some of the rights from Fallout because they are using the same music producer, Einon Zur, but this time they also hired Hans Zimmer, who is one of the most famous music directors in the entire music industry. This is a big reason why I'm putting this game so high on this list. We don't know terribly much about this game yet, but knowing that they are literally sparing no expense on music makes me think that this will be a huge AAA game. Also, post-apocalyptic worlds are in vogue right now and there aren't a lot of good post-apocalyptic MMOs on the phone, meaning that this game will have its own niche in the gaming market. The fourth game is Chrono Odyssey, formerly known as Project S. Chrono Odyssey is a fantasy MMO in which players are members of a special organization called the Idrajin, whose purpose is to take down the 12 immortal gods of that world. This is another game that I thought would be available last year, but this game also limit its release to just Asia. The game is also produced in South Korea, so we are starting to see a trend from the South Korean game developers. The reason it is still on this list is because the storyline and graphics are amazing. That, in combination with the developers' intent on making it a AAA game, gives me quite a bit of confidence. And while Inpixel is still a fairly new game company, their recent successes have been giving them a lot of hype in South Korea right now. The fifth the fifth game is Riot Games' new MMO, whose name has not yet been revealed. This means it might not actually come out in 2023, but I needed to put it on this list because it's Riot, and I really like Riot, and I think they will do a really good job with this game. Also, Riot is pushing big to make the mythologies and stories of their game worlds better known, so that no matter which one of their games you play, you will be able to keep learning about each of the characters and their greater story in the world of Runeterra. For this reason, it seems obvious that the new MMO will be based in the world of Runeterra. What isn't obvious is whether or not Riot Games will allow players to custom make their characters or if players will be forced to choose one of the 140 characters from the League of Legends world. Even though 140 might seem like a lot, most MMOs offer a lot more cosmetic diversity through character creation, so 140 might seem like it is hard to have a unique character. That being said, if Riot includes the 1,384 skins they have already made for the game, then perhaps that will be enough for players to feel unique. Though that will also require a giant game download, so I'm not quite sure how they will work all that out. The sixth game on the list is Ion 2. This is another game that I had hoped for last year and had to put it on here again because I am particularly intrigued on how they are advertising the PvP in this game. Apparently PvP fights can shift mid-fight from land to air since all of the characters can fly and maybe even to the sea. This amount of freedom given to PvP for a mobile MMO is unprecedented and I think that if they can pull it off well, it will attract a lot of serious players to this game. Now that being said, I am a little bit worried about how they will implement the flying mechanics to their game because I have yet to experience an MMO on the phone that is able to capture the feeling of flying in a satisfying way. Nevertheless, I think their commitment to these new elements of gaming will pay off for them in the end. The seventh game on the list is Project ER. Created by Nexon, this game stands out because it is built around siege warfare. These large-scale sieges will take place 24-7 in a seamless open world. And the game intends to lower the barriers on owning a base, making it easier for players to occupy their own base. Sadly, Nexon has not released a lot of footage yet, but you can see that the game footage they have released has incredible graphics, which honestly is a little bit concerning to me when you're talking about large-scale battles but perhaps they're just showing off what they're capable of and will scale down the graphics when that is needed. The eighth game is Naraka Blade Point 
which is yet another game backed by NetEase. The thing that stands out about this game is the amount of skill-based combat. Dashing correctly allows you to dodge ranged skills, which gives a skilled melee player a chance to turn their disadvantage into an advantage. This is a common feature in top-down games, but not nearly as common in MMOs with the traditional MMO angled third-person view. Furthermore, the combat looks well choreographed, which is a huge plus when playing games with lots of swordplay and martial arts. Overall, the game has a unique Blade Master feel with AAA cutscenes. The ninth game on the list is Rise Mobile. You can tell just by watching the trailer that the story is going to feel like a movie. And not just the story, the camera angles they choose while you're just walking around and exploring makes it have that movie feel. You can also tell by the trailer that the fighting mechanics are going to have some elements of dynamicy where at least every type of enemy fights different. And then it also looks like some of the enemies will have enough different types of skills that we won't be able to figure them out immediately, which is cool. The last game on the list is Torchlight Infinite. This game is already out, but it it has gotten a lot of attention from my team, so I think it's worth putting on the list. If you are in the mood for a classic RPG, this is probably the one you are looking for. And because it's on the phone, it offers a new way of playing that will make the classic feel fresh. The biggest example of this is the way they set up directing skills using your touchscreen. Clicking on a spell and dragging it to the part of the screen you want to affect is extremely satisfying because it's both intuitive and it allows the player's skill level to shine. The game does does not have an open world, but the skill tree is incredibly dynamic, allowing you to essentially custom make each of your own skills. Okay, so those are the top 10 mobile MMOs of 2023, but I do have three more honorable mentions for you. The first one is Project DX, which is Nexon's new Durango inspired game. I have to mention it because so many of you ask about it and I have the leading video on the subject, but I'm going to be honest guys, I don't know if this game is ever going to happen. The devs have literally said nothing else about it since the original post looking for developers. I know almost every MMO YouTuber mentions it, but at this point it's starting to feel kind of like the snipe hunting of the MMO world. It gets a great reaction out of people, but there's no information. All the trailers about it are fake. The devs are silent. I will be the first to let you know if they say anything about it, but right now, I don't know if it's going to even happen. The second honorable mention is Arc Age War, produced by Kakao Games. I put this one on here simply so that you guys know that I know about it. It is new and getting hype, but we really know almost nothing about it. The teaser trailer gives us really nothing to work with, and the only thing the developers have shared is that it is a mobile MMO, so I'm aware of it, and I will follow it. The third and last honorable mention is Project Q. Odin Valhalla Rising isn't even out globally yet, and Lionheart Studios is already making another MMO. Described as a full 3D seamless open world MMORPG, this game has tons of promising elements to it. First, the game uses a top-down view and focuses on large-scale battles. Personally, this type of camera angle is a favorite for me because it usually encourages more strategy implementation in the game. So in some ways, I'm actually more excited about this game than Odin Valhalla Rising, but I am confident that it will not come out until at least 2024. Well, that's it guys. If you do not see a game on here that you think should be on here, it is probably because I put it in a different genre like RPGs, survival, action, adventure, or something else. Honestly, MMOs can bleed into so many other categories, so I might've put it in one of those other videos. I'm working on those videos as we speak and they will come out very shortly. All right guys, see you next time.